Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Bill Broaddus, and I teach several TV writing classes. Um, a lot of uh, the uh, drama spec classes, which is learning the basic format of writing a one hour TV drama. Um, and then you write a spec, which is an, uh, you write an episode of an existing show. And then you are able to take writing a TV pilot. Uh, and that would be creating your own series. And in something like that, it's, it's a lot to create your own series, but we do the pilot, but we also create the, the series through this, this uh, thing I call the leave behind, which is four pages of everything about your, your series, your you know, several season arcs, several episodes of the first season log lines for those character um, uh, descriptions and an overview of what the series would be. So we work on that in conjunction with writing the pilot. So we end up with this whole idea for an episode. And I was just saying that uh, a week from Monday, we're going to have a guest speaker, the beauty of Zoom uh, from LA, who is a creator, he was a creator and developer of shows on TBS called, one's called The Librarian, one is called Leverage. He also is a credited writer. He wrote Catwoman the movie, uh, the first Transformers movie, and writes all that stuff. So he's going to be uh, chiming into our class on a week from Monday. Um, and that's what we do in the TV drama writing. Yeah. And, and Bill has just created a class that um, I th is this the first semester it's running, the late night? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which first, is really yeah. first. Uh, so I'm also yeah doing this class called late night laughs and it's writing for uh, late night TV shows like the Kimmel and uh, Fallon, Colbert, John Oliver, all that stuff. And we have the packets that people get to send in to, we don't have full packets, those are hard to get. But um, so we have packets, which is what, what they look for in when you submit to, to their show. So it's like some look for like 15 to 20 monologue jokes. They look for those different rants like the John Oliver does, that Samantha B does, and those. And uh, two weeks ago, we had our, a guest on uh, from the Colbert Show, writer Barry Julian, who's been with Colbert since it was the Colbert Report. And he talked about all their writing and gave us some great insight into writing for one of his best things he said, which applies to anyone who wants to write for TV or even screenwriting, is write as if you have the job. Like set aside some time and do it as if it's really not just a, yeah, I got to get to that. Like, especially packets. He said it took him 18 to 20 packets of sending out before he finally got a job uh, with the Colbert Report. So it takes time, but it's a it's the kind of thing where every day he's up writing jokes, writing jokes, writing jokes. But in yeah. that class will be, yeah, and then I'll be doing that again in the, in yeah. the fall. And there's a high demand for that class. It, it yeah. Builds very quickly. And right. I in that um, alumni list that I sent you guys, you could see that Felipe, who's an alum from our program, actually writes for Colbert, which is pretty cool. Um, Adam. Now, I was gonna say, it's interesting. I didn't talk about this. Um, we had a writer's assistant on a show I was working on called, you know, on Bunked, and she was trying to be a writer. And then one day she had this big smile on her face and we were like, what, what happened, Alice? And she goes, I just got a job writing on BoJack Horseman. And she kind of left the desk and now she's writing on um, Tonight Show. And it was Alison oh, Apple, yeah. so yeah. that was that was amazing. We we're all like, you know, this poor this poor person is like a racist, and then, and we became jealous of her like in a split second. It was amazing, <laughs> uh, but I forgot she's working on that now, so she's doing that stuff, which is amazing. Um, hi, <laughs> I digressed. Um, my name is Adam Lapidus. Um, I spent uh, thirty years in LA working as a television sitcom writer. So shockingly, I am teaching television sitcom writing here at BU. Um, like Bill said, I teach basically two classes, um, writing the spec, as you guys may or may know, which is writing your uh, sample of a show currently on the air is one class. And we learn how the how to do that and use it as an example to show people, showrunners, agents, managers, that you can write other people's characters, which is important in getting a job. And I also teach the writing the pilot half hour sitcom, um, which is also important, pretty important, incredibly important thing to have when you're looking for work. Um, I write in English, I just can't speak it. So it's two very different skills for me. Um, so in that class, as Bill said, it's much more intense because you're not, you're writing, you're creating the world, you're creating the characters. And we learn the differences between a spec and a pilot 
you know, which is, you know, pilots, when you create a pilot, you have to create the whole series and the and why people are going to keep watching as opposed to one specific episode that may be beginning and end. So they're two very different things, but two um, very important skills that you should have. Um, and I've been here a year and I've just been having a great time. So um, I'm thrilled. Yeah, we're very excited to have Adam join us. Um, Debbie. Hi, um, I'm Debbie Daniel Poor. I have been here since 2007, is it? Yeah. And I, I write and have written all sorts of things, which is reflected in what I teach. I teach your first class, your first workshop class in writing a feature. I also teach a class about screen write, screenplay genres, a different American genres, and it's focused on the screenwriter. And I also teach a class on fiction to feature adaptation and a new course that's just in the second year running now on writing the short form web series, which is essentially just like the class that Bill teaches except short form. Uh, so episodes that are 15 minutes or shorter. And that has been a way in which a lot of people are getting their foot in the door because they can put their own series on YouTube. And I'm sure you've heard all about it. Uh, I'm also associate chair of the department. So I'm kind of the right hand person to Paul Schneider, who's the chair of the department which means all sorts of things, which I won't bother getting into because that could be boring. Um, so hi, nice to meet all of you. I should just mention that Debbie's webisode class is um, outside of the curriculum as is a Bill's late night class that he mentioned, late night laughs, um, and could be taken as an elective. Um, uh, Marnie, are you, can, are you here Marnie? No. Yes, I am. I am here. Um, I'm sorry that you can't see my face, but I will be in front of the screen shortly. Um, I'm Marnie Zelnick. Uh, I, my background is in independent film as a writer, director, and producer. Um, and I teach, uh, for you all, a script analysis class um, where we work with um, writers, professional writers, and um, production companies to provide notes and development guide, you know, guidance um, for scripts that are projects that are in development and um, preparing to be um, to, to go into production. Um, and that class also is a little bit of a transition class into the professional world. Um, you know, not only for you all to give notes and learn to give professional notes, either as um, you know, a, a critic of, of work and as a teacher, but also to um, position yourself and you know, start to think about how you might brand yourself as a writer in the industry um, and how you want to be known when you leave school. So we also work on things like bios and um, you know, kind of after you've done a lot of writing in the program, starting to identify where your strengths are, where your interests are, um, what you hope to be doing when you leave the program. Yeah, and something really neat that we're doing, that we're launching, um, this spring in connection with um, Marnie's class and sort of branding yourself is um, profiles of our graduate, our students that are graduating, which will include that bio that, that uh, you create in her class, as well as log lines from say three, four projects that you have written um, that will go out sort of exclusively to some agents, managers and companies. And then as that goes out to them, maybe it'll become less exclusive as it goes where other people get to see it. I don't know if we'd ever put it on the website, but that's another possibility. But yeah, another neat way to sort of um, get your name out there, get your brand out there um, with, uh, with some selectivity. In other words, it's not you pushing yourself, it's us championing you and saying, this is a group. You know, I should mention that our, our program, right now we have 125 applications for 12 spots. So you know, it's very selective. Um, so we would like to use that selectivity towards our advantage in, um, in sort of putting you out there with this profile of uh, these are our latest graduates in a pretty select program. Um, so yeah, I'm also, I'm Scott Thompson. I run the screenwriting program. I also teach a couple classes within the program. Um, one is script to film where we sort of develop, we look at the relationship between the screenplay and the film. We just study a ton of um, TV shows and films, um, mostly just talking shop about everything the screenwriter is thinking through, all the decision making that goes on. Um, and I also teach Screenwriting 3, which is a class in which you write a feature length script. 
um, which I kind of mentioned in my letter to you. Um, yeah, so um, you know what might be kind of a, a nice way to, to do this from here is, and that for, you know, congratulations on this as well, as I'm saying, it's such a selective program, um, really. You know, we spent a great deal of time on your applications. Uh, and I, I hope you understand that it was not an easy decision um, to, uh, to choose amongst a very, uh, uh, you know, very competitive group, um, but it, it's a big deal. And we spend a lot of time together discussing your applications. So uh, we're very happy to have you um, uh, accepted. So, um, so what I think would be fun to do is to have, if people have questions, what you can do is, you know, prior to asking questions, just briefly introduce yourself. Debbie has one more. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted everyone to introduce themselves. Yeah, yeah. So if, you know, so we don't just run through and it's always nice to put uh, something with face like a question that we can sort of remember you by. So, um, so be careful what you say. Um, so just at any question you might have. Um, and, and just again, a brief introduction before you ask a question. You want to go through your grid? Yeah. Anybody want to? Well, I mean, we can start with anyone who has a question. You can just oh. go ahead, Darren. Hey, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for the admission. Um, I really appreciate that. I uh, understand it's competitive and, you know, very honored to, uh, to get that. Um, but I just wanted to ask, I live in Philadelphia um, and I have a job, like my family's here. Um, I wouldn't necessarily hate to move to Boston. I love Boston. I've had always had a great time visiting there, but I just wanted to ask about the feasibility of like, working remotely or uh and or being able to continue working full time and do the coursework you know in my free time um how that would work at least like for the first couple semesters i don't know if you could give yeah that. no that's a that's an excellent question and definitely in my notes of something to cover because i think that's in everyone's uh, thoughts um so the i don't know if you guys are getting once you're accepted if you're getting um emails from the university but the pres president brown of the university uh, released a statement about plans for the fall. Um, and unfortunately, um, in relation to your question, Darren, we are going to be running all film and television classes. It's not simply the choice of the screenwriting program. It's all film and television classes, the whole department, 100% in person. Um, so that means that you would have to physically live in Boston and attend classes in person. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, it's going to go back to the way it was, uh, pre pandemic. Um, and, you know, I guess anything that we've learned, anything is possible, but the plan is to run it 100% in person. The, I don't know the policy that the university is going to have in terms of vaccines. Um, but they have a, an incredibly comprehensive testing program. Um, where all the faculty are tested uh, once a week and all the students are tested twice a week. Uh, and I, I, from what I've read on their dashboard, I don't believe there's been any um, reported cases that have come out of class, the classroom experience. So they've done a great job. How that's gonna play into vaccines, I don't know. I don't know I, I, if, any, if any of the faculty have heard anything about requirements for vaccines to attend classes, you know, uh, pipe in, but I, I don't, know anything more than them saying that it's going to be a hundred percent in person in the fall um and that that's the message that you should um, be passing on to the students may i chime in about the full-time work thing yeah um, oh yes right yeah that all of us have had experience with students who do work especially graduate students who do work part-time the one student that i remember working full-time eventually had to give it up because she was so overwhelmed and she wasn't sleeping and it wasn't working for her and she wasn't getting the most out of the program. That's anecdotal. And I'm sure Scott and, and Bill and eventually Adam, you can also chime in, but it is, it is a pretty heavy duty demanding program. And I think it's difficult to keep a full-time job while doing the program. You know, maybe, maybe 20 hours a week might be max. What do you think? Scott or Bill? Well, I, I would say that I was going to go and I was going to try to find the um, the schedule for the fall to let you know. But the truth is, is that you have four classes, you know, that are roughly two hours and 45 minutes a week. And that's your class time. But I would say for the most part, 
the great deal of your work is being done outside of class. You know that you're you're writing a great deal, and um, as we go deeper into this program, the it becomes more rigorous in terms of the content that you have to create outside of class. So, yeah, I agree. It would be very hard to um, uh, to hold a full time job and uh, and get the most out of the program. I guess it would be the best way to say it. You know, I, I would look at this as a two year an opportunity. You know, within two years to get as much writing done as possible, to grow as much as possible, to stretch yourself as much as possible outside your comfort zone. You know, one thing I don't recommend doing, and I know that people do it, and we don't necessarily have any way of, of you know, knowing whether or not you're doing it, is bringing in content that you've already written and just revising it in a class. I would create new content while you're here over the, the two years, um, because, you're going to learn things that it's going to impact uh, how you start a project. And quite often when people do that, um, what they're doing is they're, when they get notes back, they're looking at like, oh my God, I've already written the next hundred pages, the next 50 pages. Now I have to change everything. Um, the, the program is designed for you to create material and write that material through these classes. Um, so I would say go all in on the program and um, and pour yourself into the classes, um, and that is hard to do with a full time job. Um, and I don't know if other people have any thoughts on that. I don't think I've ever had anyone who had a full time job, including me. No. <laughs> um, sometimes people have part time jobs. I mean, even around here, but uh, yeah, I. Full time would be too much. Yeah, I mean, we have the the uh, I mentioned the three ten teaching um, in the uh, second third semester as an opportunity, um, and uh, that's something you can do here in, in the oh. uh, you know in the department. The, the and Was like I mean, it's possible to get loans to cover or financial aid would cover living expenses in that case in a lot of, a lot of cases, right? I mean, is that pretty yeah? I, I, you know, um, Kayla and Jackie. Um, who have you've corresponded with from the grad affairs department can um, definitely help with uh, with all the logistics in terms of you know the scholarship money and the um, and any kind of loans that you might need to take even housing all those kind of non academic logistics. Um, the good news is with our um, with our LA program now being within the two years. The scholarship money, any scholarship money that you would get, would apply to uh, the LA, your time in LA. So your scholarship money applies to your your sem each you know semester while uh, a BU student. Uh, in the past, that wasn't the case. Um, the LA program, you were on your own. The scholarships did not uh, apply to that. So that's some good news. Okay. Well, what is the final deadline for accepting again? Is it you said is it May nineteenth or? Uh, I think it's April 19th, but I, I would check with, I, I just saw something about it being April 19th. It's usually April 19th, but you know, given the circumstances, I, it might be a May 19th, but I, I believe it's April 19th. Um, you should be getting, you'll, you know, what will happen is over the, after this open house and over the course of your correspondence, I, I can guarantee that you'll get a letter asking you um, about your decision and the deadline. Um, but I believe it is April 19th, uh, April 15th. Excellent. Thanks for the info. Uh, any other questions? It must be. I have a question, um, which kind of relates to that. Um, and you're Nina. Yes, my name is Nina. <laughs> um, this is also kind of a me specific question because I do live just about 15 minutes north of Boston in Wakefield. Um, and I kind of want to know along the lines of the schedule, like what a day in the life of a BU screenwriting student looks like. Um, also just me specifically, like how much do you anticipate like me commuting affecting my social life? Um, and that like, am I going to have friends if I live in Wakefield? <laughs> um, that sounds like uh, a question. Uh, what? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you guys um, the schedule for the fall, because I knew this question would pop up. Um, isn't the first thing you do is buy the faculty coffee. Isn't that the first thing? Yeah. And then it, and the rest is your time. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, That's a really good question, Nina, because we yeah. have had students who have lived 
uh, off, you know, outside of Boston and, um, and still do connect with the cohort and still do get to party in the evenings with them. And, uh -huh. you know, but it, it, it's an important question because so much of the experience that you have over these two years is what happens with the 12 of you. Mm -hmm. And yet I would also say that the, hi, also I'm here on video again. Here, um, yeah. Sorry for, sorry for being dry, for driving for, but you know, I think the short answer is yes, you will absolutely still have friends in a social relationship. The students this year who have never been in the same classroom certainly have bonded. Um, so, you know, that, that can be done from anywhere, but there is, uh, you know, it is nice to have 15 minutes is nothing. I, I live further outside the city than that. And, you know, certainly, um, you know, you can still get back and forth um, with no problem from that distance. I, I, I wouldn't think that you would need to move, you know. Yeah. So on the bright side, you might dislike your cohort. So that hasn't been a problem. So here's the here's the schedule. Now the 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 um you can pretty much count on this. The only one that uh, uh um Marty didn't mention this, but it's there's a possibility that she'll be teaching that um share, right Scott. oh sorry, I didn't share. It says share. Yeah, it says share. It's oh wow, idea. okay, then oh. it's on my other oh, okay. screen. Sorry. I was like, wait. Um, so um, the uh, writing a short narrative um, that likely will happen at, on Thursdays, uh, 12, 3 15, but uh, that's the only one that I could see possibly changing, but that's what your schedule looks like um, uh, for the fall. Um, Great. Thank you. That's really helpful. Yeah. So, so, but I would uh, once again say that um, in many cases, you know, the, the, the majority of the work is done outside of class, but that doesn't mean you have to be on campus to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're really excited to have in-person events again. You know, one thing that's come out of this that was mentioned um, already is the um, zooming in people into our classroom that ordinarily we would have to fly in Put them up in a hotel in Boston, you know. So that is something that I think will spill over. That we will continue to try to do is uh, zoom in guests. That uh, again, you don't necessarily have to be on campus for that. Um, but uh, that, in in addition to in person guests, that doesn't mean we're going to do that in lieu of that. But I think that's something that um, you know, like Bill saying, it, it it really takes. We've had guest speakers where it really just takes them an hour. You know, they they don't have to leave. They can zoom in from their own home um, or from their office. So that's been uh, really neat. Yeah, that's been huge for me in my development class. I've had so many guests come in who are like working and like, I'll take a break from lunch, you know, so. Yeah, but I, I just can't wait to have like office hours and like sit down with you, you know, like, I mean, I, they're all Zooms now, but it just would be nice to, you know, um, to get back to some sense of normalcy. Um, does that, Nina, does that answer your questions? Awesome. Others? Uh, don't be shy. If you think it's a question that's just for you, I mean, because there are people that, especially graduate students, that in relation to Nia's question, that don't live on campus and that, you know, um, live however far outside of campus that they've decided is best. I have a for question them. for Abby. How do you say your last name? <laughs> it's Andrelitis. Yes, oh, it's okay. Lithuanian. Oh, you're kidding. My, my, my mother was Lithuanian. Oh, I'm only like a fraction Lithuanian. Do you, so do you, know, do you know any Lithuanian? No. <laughs> Nothing? I, I know. Oh, I'm pretty on the spot. Keptauanus. That's all I know. That's how are you. Oh, as far as it got. Yeah. That's definitely a question that's only for you. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. You know Bill's mother? Do you wait? <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? that uh Nicholas um well just thank you so much for the acceptance as well um I just had a question about the uh um the LA program and yeah. I understand that it's a it's a combination of both coursework and internship and from what I saw on the website the coursework is kind of more like business oriented um and I was wondering if you could speak to that as well as like what we would actually be doing in the internship like would we actually be writing or would we be doing some other form of work um, yeah absolutely um so the 
classes uh, be, prior to the internship to get to get into that the class that's taught is a rewrite class um right now michael gunn who also is an alum um is um is teaching that class um he's uh, been writing with aaron sorkin over the years worked on newsroom billionaires um really altogether awesome guy uh, he has experience in um, feature and tv uh, as TV, as I mentioned, he, I think he was on the blacklist with a script called The Victorian, a historical piece um, in the past five years. So he's, got, he's you know, talented at both. In that case, most of the people rewrite, you rewrite a script that you've written here in Boston and over those three semesters. In most cases, people um, have rewritten a feature, but because of Michael's experience, I'm sure he would uh, open the door to rewriting uh, the pilot that you've written. Uh, while here in Boston, one of the pilots, if you write two, um, so uh, so that's the that's the rewrite class that uh, meets as a regular weekly schedule, one night a week as a workshop. Um, the um, the other class is more of the business oriented class that you mentioned. There's a, there's coupled with that is a lab, you know, business class, sort of a larger lecture going through everything that is the business of this industry and then it's coupled with a guest speaker series where you have uh, people come in and you know you can ask questions of them about maybe a producer writer director whatever it may be uh, and that's a constant rotating cycle of who's going to come and visit it's not the same every semester and then the internships um, so you can get one or two internships um, it's basically a 20-hour minimum um, you can, if you get two internships, you're spreading yourself out where you have more contacts. So there's, you know, a plus to, uh, to going that route. Um, but you're limiting how much time you're spending with those companies. If you do one internship, then you're spending a great deal with one company, but of course you don't have as many contacts, but as far as what you do, that really depends on the company. You, there's a process in which you have an interview with the people, the folks in BU and LA to sort of place you. So um, if you have a certain area that you're really interested in, then you can tell them about that and they can try to place you with a company that can help feed those interests. If you know, if you want to go into development, if you want to work with an agency, you know, a management house, you want to work, you know, with on a TV show, you know, they can certainly, it doesn't mean you're going to get, you know, those are obviously sought after the TV shows. Um, I would say with the, an internship at the beginning, I don't think you're going to be writing um, uh, material for a show. That's something that would happen long down the road. If you're really interested in TV writing, getting to be an intern on a TV show is huge and could potentially get you to this, you know, through the path of being maybe an assistant to an, a writer and then uh, moving forward from there. But um, yeah, as far as what you exactly you do for the intern um, for the company is it really depends on the company itself. Um, we, tr we do try to curate the internships and there is a report card system that we try to keep up on and I'm, you know, investigating more and more into this as we move forward. Um, if a company does not do well by an intern, then they're reported. And so that we can sort of find out, okay, which companies are the, the be provide the best internships. I can also say that we, I push very hard for our program to get um, the best internships that are offered through the LA program. Um, and I'll just keep telling them, you guys learned how to do coverage. You guys are in a select program. Um, you know, you're obviously a little bit older than the, the underground crowd, undergrad crowd that might also be participating in another part of BU and LA. Um, so we try to push the, the best possible internships in your direction. Uh, but I, I couldn't speak for exactly what you do. It would depend on the type of internship, the company the type of company, you know, um, some with an agency or management house, it might be answering calls and that can also get you uh, in contact with people that are connected with that agency. Um, yeah. Scott? yeah, Adam. Yeah, I just want to jump in and say, you know, I've had this question before. You really, when it comes to internship, don't think about what you're doing because what you're doing at that moment shouldn't matter. It's what can it get you, you know? So if you're getting coffee for someone, that doesn't mean that that's who you are. But if you're getting coffee for someone who's doing what you want to do, that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? So it's just getting close to what you want to do. So, you know, internships are now always, you know, so you shouldn't be thinking in terms of like, 
gee, what am I going to be doing there? So like, you know, who am I doing it for and what's the company and things like that. And then whatever they ask you to do, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, um, I, had a, I had a student who was in her late thirties and she was like, you know, I'm going to do an internship. I'm getting people coffee and, you know, it feels like I'm too old for that. And I said, no, your career is young and, you know, it's what you're doing. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how old you are. It's if you're doing something that you feel has an end game for you, you know? Yeah. So like I got my big break. I was, you know, Bill said I was a PA on a TV show for someone, we, mutual person we work for. I was getting lunch. I was getting dinner. I was getting their laundry, but you know, I was near television writers and that started me. So, you know, that's, what's key about those things. Yeah. And I would also say that whenever the opportunity comes up to do something that uses your understanding of story and screenwriting, jump on that and do it is the best you can, you know? So coverage, I think, is a great example of that. If you can um, show them that you, you can provide insightful comments uh, and, you know, good feedback that even the writer could, could read and you're professional about it, um, then you'll get to do, they'll trust your opinion, you get to do more, you know, of that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's described as like a, a three month interview and, and you may, they may not have work for you, that specific company, but if you're someone that they believe is a good person, you know, um, smart and, uh, and they can recommend you on, then they will, they, you know, it, it, um, it shines well on them to recommend you if they, if they believe in you. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Scott. Yeah. I was just going to go into, uh, kind of like what Adam's talking about is, and while you're in the intern thing. You're, you're hopefully going back to your apartment and, you know, after you eat a good meal and do whatever, and you're writing. If that's what you want to do, then that's what you're, you're still doing. Because the one thing you're hoping to get through these internships, like Adam said, you're, you're near someone who they have the job that you would like to do someday. You, you want to have those scripts always ready. And you, you, never, you never just go, there, I, I, I took the, 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 you know, spec writing class now i've got that script it's like that's just the beginning that you always want to keep keep writing fresh stuff keep tightening old stuff whatever because that's when you ask anybody who will read your script if they're willing to do it whether they're an assistant whether they're the receptionist you get you know you the key is get people to read it it's it, even as adam's explaining it you just think i mean i know this but it's such an odd business that's how you get, that's how you get work. Like I'm saying, like, you get in there and you get around people who you, wow, I want to do that someday. I want to do that. That's a, another job. You might go in for an interview and they'll just look at your resume and they go, okay, we'll hire you. It just doesn't work that way. You have to move up in these little stages like that. And if you want to write, then you got to be writing. You always have to be working on that script. Just because you finish a script here doesn't necessarily mean it's done and that you should be on to your next one, whatever you want. So that when someone says, not only when someone says, oh, what do you have? And you'd have this script, then they say, what else do you have? And then you say, I have this script as well. That's the way it works. You don't just stop writing. You have to keep keep on writing and be ready that when somebody says, hey, yeah, sure, I'll read you. Oh, you're a writer? Oh, I'll read your script. As you're standing there with four Starbucks copies and things. So really, you'll read my script? Great, I'll bring it in tomorrow. Yeah, that's cool. I'll, I'll email it to you. You know, that's what it's about. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with creating a little bit of heat in what you're doing, entering festivals, competitions. Um, that's always wonderful if you're interning with somebody and you can share the news that your script placed in a contest or won a, you know, a competition or a festival. Um, BU, uh, our department will um, uh, reimburse you up to $200 a year um, in entry fees for competitions. So you'd have to pay for upfront yourself, but you can um, submit those receipts to the department and they will reimburse you up to $200 a year. So that's kind of cool. And I would recommend taking advantage of that resource. Um, and, uh, and, and you know, there's competitions that are select to the type of script you're writing. Um, I think that's a great way to, to create some interest in what you do. And Bill, did you say a good meal? Did you mean macaroni and cheese? <laughs> you set that up and I was sure. this, this whole thing I'm is hungry now yeah. yeah any other questions anything else that you guys yeah, yeah I'm wondering if hi I'm Araceli um I'm wondering if there's any overlap between um the screenwriting curriculum and any kind of production or other aspects of development we are um 
always working on something in relation to that. Um, it's a, probably a little premature to get too deep into it, but we would like to see um, a connection between the shorts class um, and uh, production. We do have a script library um, that Debbie has been uh, pushing uh, you know, and curating for quite some time now, um, where we try to have a, a somewhat fluid library. You can update the scripts and, uh, and you put them in there, the production students, when looking for scripts, material for classroom projects or, you know, um, films that they're trying to make, uh, they have that resource. So uh, that includes the, even the short form content. Um, so we try our best to, to, to connect the production students with our screenwriting students because the production students are of, they're often looking for content. Um, but yeah, I think that that shorts, you know, obviously the short form content is really the shorts and the web series and stuff that you can shoot in a, a shorter amount of time on possibly a lower budget is ideally where we'd like to, um, to help. So I think, I think we'll, we'll if, if that, um, plays out the, the sort of the things we're working on. We'll be sure to update you guys on uh, on the status, and I, that would likely be in the coming months. Any other? So you you can also with your elective. A lot of our students take directing. Um, production classes. Um, we do have a lot of students that have production background, undergrad back, uh, background in production, and um, and they've gone on to, if it's a more advanced class, they've approached the professor and asked if they can participate in the class because they have uh, an undergraduate degree in production. So that's another option. Yeah, Bill. I have another question. Can I ask who, 1969 Gallery, who are you? Yes, uh, that is not my name. <laughs> I'm Francis. I work for the gallery. I did not mean to join with um, their Zoom. And I talk about the meeting by doing that. Any questions, Francis? Now that you're on the spot, that hasn't been answered. I have. I think I'll email if that's okay. Maybe sure. a couple more Absolutely. letters. Yes, you. you guys all have my email. And and you know, um, I'm speaking for all the faculty. If there's if you want to reach out to the faculty members. Um, other than me, you're welcome to do that. And if you don't have their email, um, just reach out to me. I can put it in the chat. The chat. Yeah. So um, I'm going through my notes for things that we kind of sort of hit on many of the things that um, I was hoping we'd hit on. Oh, but I had a question. Excuse me. Yeah, John. Um, this is John. Hi. Um, sorry, I joined a tad late, so I hope I'm, this is not a retread. But like, I, I, I saw the fall schedule, um, and I'm curious, like, a rest, what, what you would say a recipe for success is for a student at Boston, like outside of class. Like, what does that life look like? Um, I would start by saying, you know, I, in the summer for my class, I'm going to. Um, throw out a lot of films and TV shows that I would ask that you see be even before the semester starts. I would invest yourself as in every way you can. Watch every movie, read every text for, for every class, pour yourself into the writing, get as much as you can out of, it's, it's really not that long. You know, it's three semesters in Boston, you know, two years total. Um, it can go by quickly. Uh, and I, it's designed for you to get the most out of it. Um, you know, it's, for me, it's, it, it's not about getting grades and, and simply getting a degree. It's about what you got out of the time that you were here. So I would say, pour yourself into it. But I'd also say, you know, the, um, the cohort is such, uh, you know, everyone is, I've just enjoyed the group so much. And I think watching everybody grow together there's no competition amongst the group. There's room for everybody. It, it's a small class and it's, there's room for everybody to succeed. Um, I would pour yourself into each other as well in terms of the relationships and finding people within the cohort that give you notes that are honest. You know, th that's really hard to find. When you get out there, 
you know, everyone's going to sort of have an agenda with what they want in terms of notes. And it would be great to have somebody that, um, that you really trust that will always be honest with you, that won't pull any punches, um, especially as you're sort of developing your career and it's hard to find people that are going to give you notes. Um, so yeah, I would, I would recommend developing the relationships within the group. A lot of people that, um, that have succeeded in this program have ties to other people in the program, not even maybe even their year, you know, but especially their year. Um, a lot of people are very tight in terms of their friendships and, um, and you know, so uh, I was reaching out to a couple of students that graduated a few years back and one of them was working for a company and they found out about opening at, at you know, a desk and they let the other person know. So it's just, those kind of things where it's, uh, they may not post a job, but there's an opportunity uh, that comes through these relationships. So yeah, I'd absolutely recommend pouring yourself into the writing, any of the requirements that we're asking of you um, and, uh, and also getting to know each other and growing with each other and being generous with your notes. And, uh, and um, yeah, I guess that's that, any other thoughts on that? Yeah, well, let's say that it, it's all about relationships. Like all, if you look at people like, you know, Seth Rogen and all the people, they knew each other before they were famous, you know, Amy Poehler and you know, they knew each other, like, you know, way before they got famous. So it's all about relationships and, you know, you know, and, and pulling each other up, you know, somebody will get successful first and they'll help you. And, you know, this is your first chance to build that relationship in that group, you know, that hopefully will go out there and, you know, pull each other along. Yeah, I mean, we have um, uh, two students that are graduating in May, um, at least two that I know of that are writing together and they're working on projects together. They've, they've seen each other's work long enough over the two years to realize, you know what, we give each other great notes, we feed off each other, we should write something together. And so they started working on projects together. That's, we even have a couple that got married through our program. So. Oh, not saying, but you know, <laughs> don't make any promises. Yeah. So get your spouses. <laughs> do they work together? That's the question. Yes, they do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, I worked for a husband and wife team once, writing team, and it was so, they were wonderful, so frustrating because whoever pitched one thing, the other one wouldn't get, that's brilliant. And we're like, well, of course <laughs> you think it's brilliant. It's your wife or your husband. <laughs> you benefit from the success. <laughs> yeah, but then when they fought, it was like, ooh, this is not going to end when they get home. It was not <laughs> good. It was not. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I just, in every way, I'd pour yourself into the time that you're here. And when you, same thing with LA, you know, the internships, you know, as Adam was saying, like, don't simply think, what can I get out of everything that I do, but just show them who you are, you know, and, uh, and they will want to champion a person that they believe in and, and do you a solid in, in different ways, whether it's recommending you onto someone for a job, reading your script, you know, um, yeah, the term, the, term I, the term I always use is be politely aggressive, you know, because no one's going to hand you a job. They're just not going to say, wow, you look nice. I'm going to give you a job, you know, it's, and people, I always say the, the good people in Hollywood will appreciate people who are going for it as long as it's done politely. So that's the term I always say, be politely aggressive. This um, maybe an intern or, or first time getting a job, but when uh, we had our guest from, uh, from the uh, late, late show with Stephen Colbert, and somebody asked him, all right, if you get a job, like, how do you, how do you be successful? Like, what is it to be successful in a show like that? Especially if, or, or if you interned. And he thought for a second and he said, be a problem solver. Like, don't just go to someone and say, oh, that's going to be a problem. Oh, they don't have this. Don't have this. Just go there with some solutions. And he said, it actually happened one time with this woman on the show with uh, Colbert. And she said, we, we have this issue going on this, but we can do this, this, and this. And he was like, wow, that's great. And he turned around and was like, full time right now. She's great. This, he said, and he said, be, you know, so you don't want to just become with, oh no, they don't have that footage, you know? And it's like, okay, now we can panic. No. And it's like, but I did this. So, I, you know, I think we can maybe get this to work, you know? So be thinking like that. And that's the thing you know, make yourself, make yourself invaluable, you know, be that problem solver to whatever extent you can. I knew a guy who has an amazing career as Jim Brooks, the head of his production company for 40 years, because as a PA, he could put Jim's stereo to together. If you know, Jim Brooks, <laughs> he plays Simpsons. He was a PA and she was like, I need my stereo. And he put the stereo together. He goes, I like you. And he's now the, 
the president of his company. It has been for like decades. In a room filled with stereos. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do with all these stereos? I don't know. I just couldn't stop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of um, a lot of people go from being assistants as well to um, to working with uh, those companies um, or the the people that they're an assistant to. We uh, Debbie does the uh, Cinematech events. And one of the guests we had was Matt Pitts, who um, writes for Westworld. And uh, he started out as an assistant for JJ Abram. And I remember him letting, you know, reaching out to me as like, I'm driving JJ Abram from a job, one, one meeting to the, another. He's like, I, you know, he didn't love doing it. And I was like, just do it for a little bit longer and then let him know that you want to get back to what you love, which is writing. And when he did that, JJ Abram was like, where do you want to be represented? <laughs> you know, uh, what would you like to do? Um, and, you know, he just, just did right by him and, uh, um, and he gave him a great opportunity and he's been writing for Bad Robot um, for you know, a couple of decades now. So um, yeah, he's had quite a career. Yeah, I think people sometimes might, especially looking at an intern thing when they say assistant in there might kind of bum out at first, like, oh, assistant, what does that mean? But that's like, that's really uh, doesn't mean that. I mean, you're still going in there and just doing what you can do. It doesn't, you know, it's not your forever job. It's just get in there and get close to people and watch how they work and see how, how the whole business works and see how you can fit in. It's, it doesn't help that they made a movie called The Assistant. <laughs> it makes it look dreadful. Yeah. No. I don't think it's quite like that. The movie Swimming with Sharks. That oh, movie, yeah. The movie Swimming with Sharks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Don't watch that movie. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we're counseling everyone though how to leave the program and really yeah. what we want to do is <laughs> counsel you how yeah. to come to the program and be successful. Oh, so um, any other so. Oh, any other questions you guys have about your time here? What it would be like? Um yeah, I asked a question. Um my name is John by the way. Nice to meet you all. Um I had to step out for a few minutes so I apologize if this has been asked already. Um, my question is, um, are there any opportunities um, for uh, cross, um, a crossover between departments? So like um, if we're writing uh, scripts, uh, screenplays, uh, teleplays, are there any opportunities for other departments, um, like production departments, um, to uh, create those things, to actually like make them? Yeah, we did talk a little bit about that. And uh, we have a script library that um, we're consistently um, asking students to participate in, and that's a resource for the production students to look for material, um, whether it be short form series or short films. Um, so yeah, we, we do try to um, connect the dots between production students and screenwriting students and are continuously working on some opportunities in the future um, to help bring that forward. And, and you can also take production classes, you, I mean, a class with your elective in the second semester which many students do do. That's excellent, that's awesome. Any other? I was going through that slideshow that it would have shown if we had to go through the classes, but I think we covered um, most of the classes. Um, yeah, go ahead. I just had one more question actually. Um, so as you said, like the goal is to always just be constantly writing. When we graduate up about how, how many finished works and whatever genre do we graduate with that we wrote throughout the program? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it does depend on the, um, the classes you take with the elective. Um, you could come out with two pilots if you chose to uh, write a pilot, you chose to make one your elective, the pilot class. So you can take either the comedy pilot or the drama pilot, but with your elective, you could take the, the, the other one. Um, so therefore you'd have two pilots um, at least two shorts, um, uh, potentially uh, three or four shorts, uh, two features, um, two spec scripts that are for existing show, one comedy and one uh, drama. Um, and then a few um, features that are developed, but maybe not finished. So for example, Debbie has the genres class in which you sort of, forced out, you can correct me if I'm off with this, Debbie, sort of out of your comfort zone and learning how to blend genres. And quite often, I'd say it's like 50% maybe, 
the students that take that class, um, the students that 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 um, that develop that script and really want to go further with it, write the feature, the full feature in Screenwriting Three in my class. I know that because I'm obviously seeing them coming through with something that's obviously a lot of questions have been answered and it's it's pretty far along. Um, if you don't choose to do that and you want to start a new feature, then you know you would have a feature in that and a feature started in Debbie's class. So as far as how many features you have, a lot of people would write, you know, finish a feature in the summer that they started in either screenwriting one, screenwriting two, or, um, or the genres class. So you could come out with a few features uh, if you push yourself over the summer to, to finish those, but you'll certainly have them started. And, you know, that really is the answering all those questions to get it rolling, bringing everything together, all the pre-writing, character development, um, you might as well get the script finished. And these are, these are scripts that go through workshops in the classroom. So you, have, you get a lot of feedback on them. It's not just you going off and writing it all by yourself. So you get constant feedback. So you're constantly, you know, getting it to where it needs to be. Yeah, and, and you're getting notes at the end of the semester as well. So for Screenwriting 3, uh, the class I mentioned that I teach, um, I give quite a few notes at the end of the semester because my hope is that you're going to take those notes and maybe not rewrite it right away because you know you have another, another semester with uh, quite a bit to do. But after you're done, you'll have those notes uh, to rewrite in the future. Um, so yeah, maybe when you graduate, you may still have some work to do. Um, you know, you're always rewriting, but you'll have notes to polish material, um, especially if it's the if it's right before you graduate. Um, so you'll you'll graduate with quite a portfolio of uh, material, but there'll probably be more work to do if you haven't gotten to it in terms of uh, using the notes that they've given to you at the end of a semester. Thanks. And just real quick to the point, that's one of the things you're learning while you're here. It's not just writing, it's rewriting and how to take notes, which we all have to do in the real world. So that's just as an important skill to learn during the process while you're at BU. So when you get out, you can know how to take notes, you know, take from them and make your work better and learn that part of the process, which is hugely important and not many people, you know, can handle. And this is a great place to learn how to do that. Yeah, I, I absolutely love teaching the Screenwriting 3 class, the feature class, because it's that's all it is, it's just weekly, you know, um, giving notes back and uh, and people just churning out more material, more material every single week. Um, so yeah, it's it's necessary in order to succeed, but also to to uh, to get through the programs to be able to take notes. And if, if I could add to that, you use the word churning, um, which sounds a little negative, but what's wonderful is that everybody in the group really looks forward to seeing what their colleagues are, are drumming up, what they're writing, and then keeping up with them and saying, oh my God, you rewrote that into this, it's brilliant. So we learn from each other's work and how people rewrite and how people take a concept and turn it into, a, execute it into a full-fledged feature or into a pilot or into a whole series. There's so much more learning that goes on than what is your script. And that's, that's a beautiful part of the whole thing. Yeah, and you know, to go back to John's question about what is successful, you know, in terms of the program, it's growing. Absolutely push yourself, you know, take the notes, listen to everybody's thoughts. It may be in the workshop that you think that that person doesn't get you, doesn't understand what you're trying to do. It's partly on you that you haven't, you know, uh, uh, given them what they need to understand that, but just take as many notes as you can and then look at everything and figure out how it's going to work. You know, it's, sometimes it's that that little you know idea between the note where someone may say, "This is I don't understand this. This isn't working," and they may not on the spot be able to articulate exactly what's <clears throat> what's happening there or what's not working. But if you sit there and look out, look at it, and try to figure out what's the source of that note, why were they saying that? Um, that really helps in terms of, of of taking notes in the future. But yeah, really push yourself to grow as a writer. Don't sit back and, you know, the, the, the program is not here for you to show off to this group what you're capable of doing. Yes, you want to do your absolute best, but writing is very humbling. You know, um, you want to uh, 
you want to push yourself, you want to grow, you get you do as well as you can when you present the pages, and then sort of take a step back and say, how can I be better um, by listening to everything that people have to say. And I think there's a ton of love amongst the group, like everybody wants everybody to succeed. So the notes are incredibly generous, thoughtful, um, and, and supportive. Yeah, I have to say to that end, because we just started the process in the script analysis class of writing bios and the way that um, I did it this year, because I, I noticed it happened sort of organically last year was that instead of just having our, your, you, you guys, um, or the students sit down and write their own bios um, to start with, they come in with a few thoughts, you know, about who they are, and then everybody else gets to talk about them and gets to talk about sort of how they see each other as writers. And it's the most wonderful thing because, you know, I get to see, I, I haven't really taught the, this group of students um, in writing classes, but I get to see not only how well they know about it, know each other and how much they care, but how insightful they are about the voice of the other writers in their class. So, you know, oftentimes it's, it's in those discussions that a writer sort of finally owns who they really are as a writer, but it's by hearing their cohort talk about them. And it's, it's this really amazing process that's happened over the time that they've been in class together where, you know, you develop this relationship, but sometimes you don't even realize how close you are or how, how clear other people have become to you. And then you give that back to the writer. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a really, it's a really fantastic bond um, that you'll develop and, and a big part of what goes on in the program. Yeah, and maybe to clarify with that, that nearly all of your classes are together with each other throughout um, the time that you're here. So you really do get to know each other. Any other questions? So you'll have to become friends with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna have a choice, Nina. <laughs> right. No, I mean, I, I, it's graduation. I still think about graduation last year. Uh, how wonderful it was and how much everybody cares for each other it's really becomes a family maybe you won't get married but you know <laughs> you'll become very close any other questions i mean one thing i should mention is that be aware of the um i think kayla probably sent out an email um about um, and additional meetings, additional Zooms on logistics about the program. Um, we may not be able to answer all the that sort of housing stuff and whatnot, but um, they will have meetings for specifically for the screenwriting group as well um, to let you know what you need to know to make an informed decision. And th that's really what this is about for all of you is hopefully we're helping you make an informed decision about your future. That's our goal here. Scott, can we go around just to hear where everybody is, what town or city or state they're sitting in? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm just gonna go through, uh, I'll mention your name because I'll just go through the grid here. Um, if Nina, if for some reason you're first and you already said you're from Wakefield, but if you wanna just introduce Hi, <laughs> I'm Nina. I'm sitting on my bedroom floor in Wakefield, Massachusetts, which is 15 minutes north of Boston. <laughs> I've heard of it. <laughs> my wife works in Wakefield, so that's neat. Uh, John. Hello, uh, my name's John. As I've said, uh, I am sitting in Allentown, Pennsylvania, um, which is around an hour from Scranton, around an hour from Philly. Uh, so we're somewhere in between there. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Excellent, thank you. John Elson. Yeah, uh, my name is John and I am in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and it's, uh, it's, the weather's not good here. It's not good, no, <laughs> trying to get out of town. <laughs> the weather's wonderful here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, Abby. Hi, I'm Abby. I'm currently in Narragansett, Rhode Island, because I go to URI, but I'm from a small farm town in Connecticut, so I'm local. <laughs> New England. Thank you. Araceli, am I pronouncing that properly? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm currently in at my childhood home in Miami, but I'm 
uh, kind of throughout the whole pandemic been going back and forth to my apartment in New York. Excellent. Miami, Florida. Yeah. Not Ohio. Yeah, well, it's possible. Um, Nicholas. I'm in a small town in British Columbia, Canada. Um, probably it's right, right across the border actually. So the biggest town nearby would probably be Spokane. Um, is that, isn't that redundant to say small town in Canada? <laughs> what do they have like five cities, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm from, I'm from Toronto, but I'm working here for the, throughout the pandemic. So I should have brought my Tim Horton cup I have in my classroom. <laughs> um, Darren. I'm in Philadelphia. Um, I actually used to live in Allentown, so. Um, a native. <laughs> yeah, I've lived in Pennsylvania most of my life, but um, I have visited Boston, and it, it's it's a great town. I've I had a great time up there. <laughs> um, oh, Francis, you just changed your name just in time. I was about to say 1969 gallery, but God. Yes, I'm Francis. I am in Northampton, Massachusetts, like an hour and a half outside of Boston, and I lived in Somerville right next to Boston and in Providence, Rhode Island for the past six years. Great, Abby. Hi, me, did you say Abby? Yeah. I went. Oh yeah, we went, sorry, I'm sorry. I, you <laughs> moved on my, I thought so, and you moved on the uh, the grid. Sneaky. It's a uh, Hannah. It's what people from Connecticut do, they're sneaky that way. Yeah, they just went, <laughs> it's like a Rubik's cube. Hannah. I'm Hannah. Um, I'm currently in Medfield, Massachusetts. So, you know, also outside of Boston. And I've been here since I graduated from college in 2019 from Elon. So living at home with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Tavius. Hi, I'm Tavius. Um, I'm currently in Greenville, North Carolina because uh, of school. It's my last semester. Um, but I'm from Durham, North Carolina, so. Excellent, thank you. Brian. Hi everyone, first of all, Scott and I are not related, so I didn't get in <laughs> through nepotism, um, but I'm in uh, Washington, DC, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, great to meet all of you. Brian's in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> Annie. Hello. Annie. Um, uh, right now I'm in, Canton, Michigan. I actually just rushed back here from the University of Michigan campus in Ann Arbor, just about 20 minutes away. So that's why I was a little bit late for the meeting, but I'm in Michigan. It's very nice. And if you see me glancing off to the side this way, it's because my cat is sleeping. He's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> Emmanuel. Yeah, Emmanuel, Ghana, West Africa. So yeah, that's where I am. <laughs> Excellent. Who wins the award for furthest away? <laughs> Yeah, talk. yeah. It seems <laughs> like last year, last year there was competition, but this year I'm, yeah. I'm taking it home. I'm taking yeah. it home. <laughs> <laughs> you win. Hands up. Mm -hmm. Sakanya? Did I pronounce that right? Hi, yeah, yeah, right. Hi, uh, my name is Sakanya. I'm from Kolkata, India. Um, I grew up in Kolkata, but I'm currently based in New Delhi. And um, I'm currently pursuing my master's, master's in um, urban studies, and um, I'm also working. I work at India Today. I'm a um, um, sub-editor at India Today. And do you have a fan there? Your hair is blowing very dramatically. I'm just really- uh, uh, Yes, actually. <laughs> 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 she brings it everywhere she goes. It's a good look, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I think she just won, though. She won. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking yeah. that. Yeah. A, little a little too yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always know that Dino was out of the running from the very start. <laughs> I heard she's very right competitive. <laughs> so is, is there anything else that we can shed light on that you're interested in or any questions that... Um... May I ask Ta Tavius or Tavius, how do you pronounce your name? Tavius. Tavius, may I ask you a question? I lived in North Carolina for in Chapel Hill for a couple years and my youngest daughter was born there and I loved Durham. Is the Ninth Street Bakery still there? Um, I actually haven't been downtown in a long time because of the uh, pandemic, so I don't know. Uh, 
but, I love that place. Yeah. It was such a great place. Anyway, I love that whole area. Wish I could go back. It is like one of the most popular parts of Durham. So yeah, I love it too. Okay, I have to quickly ask Abby, we're in Connecticut. My wife's from Connecticut. It's it's a really small town called Hebron. It's like central Connecticut. People from Connecticut don't know where it is. <laughs> you pass it on the highway going to New York from here. My wife's from Madison and she'll never say where she's from because everybody from Connecticut doesn't think anybody knows where they're from Connecticut. They also say New Haven. I know. I'm like central Connecticut. So I say like near Hartford. That's what she says. She goes near New Haven because no one will know Madison. Uh, <laughs> It's a Connecticut thing. I don't know. It's Connecticut, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Anybody else have questions? I can certainly stick around after if there's specific questions. I know some of you had um, wanted to meet. Um, I can do that as well in the future. Uh, Zoom about any program related questions that you want to get a rundown on. Um, but um, Anything else? Um, yeah, I can ask a question. Um, and I, again, I don't, I, because I had to step out, I'm not sure if this was asked, so I apologize if it was. Um, but what sort of um, internships uh, can we expect from the um, uh, semester abroad in Los Angeles? Well, there is a database of somewhere around 500 different companies that it's revolving. So it's changing, as I said, everything from um, students reporting on their experiences with companies to new companies developing, new companies coming in contact with um, uh, BU, uh, the faculty when we, quite often if we work with a company, we'll let them know, you know, that they're looking for interns and then that becomes part of the database. So it, it you know, it really depends on your interest. If you, if you want to work for an agency or management house, to learn how that works, to see how scripts come through. That's, it's uh, a very um, rapidly moving, rapid pace uh, industry. Um, it's hard to, to do that for a long time, but in, an internship I think is compressed in three months, so it, it's doable. Um, but yeah, it depends on what your interests are. You'll have an interview and we'll sort of find out what works for you, but it's it's constantly rotating. It's constantly changing in terms of what type of companies. So we had a student that was very interested in animation. Uh, she, her, during her interview, she said, I really, she, you know, she even draws. So she wanted to work in animation, not just storytelling, but in drawing. And um, she let them know. And they were like, well, we know of two companies that we work with that do animation, but if you have others that, so she started working with another company and then that becomes the part of their database. So it's, it depends on your interests. It, the, the interview process will give you leads that you'll um, connect with companies, but you're also welcome if you have a connection with a company to ask the university to give approval for them. It doesn't have to come from their database, um, but they will provide you with, um, with internship possibilities. But yeah, it's, it's nearly endless. Go ahead, Hannah. Thank you. Sure. I just had a quick question. Um, what do students typically do for housing when they're in LA, just because you're only out there for a couple months? Yeah. So, well, it is the end of the program. So it's sort of designed that if you decide you want to stay there, which a lot of the grads do, they stay in Los Angeles. Um, we do have housing, apartment style housing, where they have, um, depending on how much you want to spend, they will give you an apartment that has a kitchen in it with two two bedrooms um you know so you have four people in the apartment or you can have single bedrooms where you have two people in the apartment you can ask to live with someone from the program we've had people that have that that decide not to do that and bu will reimburse you for the the fees for room and board and then you can go get your own place we've had people rent condos where we had as many as six people from the program renting a condo um, and living together. So I think with the grads, they usually would rather find their own housing, um, but we do, BU does have a, a three month apartment that you can stay in. They also help with um, car rentals if you don't have a car out there and you will need, if you want a car. Um, 
I think Uber's kind of changed that quite a bit, but but uh, they do have parking and um, they'll set you up with car rental. But that group of people that lived in that house, they also shared a car too. Um, so that was another thing by people living together, they share a car and take turns, you know, with the car. So yeah. there's all sorts of ways people deal with it. Yeah. They shared a toothbrush too, I think. <laughs> I think I heard that. It was a rented toothbrush. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> in the car. <laughs> you got to uh, clean the car somehow. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Hannah? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Sure. Any other? And these are things that we will go through. So we'll, you guys will sit down with the people from BU and LA and they'll, you'll go through the process with them in you know the, the fall before you uh, go out to LA. They'll answer all your questions, you know, go through all the logistics and uh, make sure that you're feeling comfortable with the, the shift. I should have had my place in LA when I left. I could have rented it out to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you all can contact any of us yeah. um, at any time because our emails are easy to find from the website. And so we're here. Right. I mean, you just have to go to the um, the film and television website and then go to the faculty um, drop down and find everybody. And we will be hiring a new faculty as well. Um, so there'll be one more of us. And none of us are going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Until we get vaccinated. This is all this is our life. Yeah, and then even after we get vaccinated, I don't think I wasn't that social before. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to sign off because I okay. have to skedaddle. But it's really great meeting all of you and putting your faces on your glorious applications. And we hope to see all of you uh, again. So, thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. I'll stick around. Anybody thank have any you. questions? Until I'm the last person in the Zoom. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.